We have seven days and ten. Um, obviously, due to the urgency on Main Street, um, the town administrator would like to move right along, and I think maybe for uh, that reason as well as for our colleagues' problem, uh, I'm going to ask you to go first. <laughs> And, and we, I have visited the site, but I'm going to get back down there. Uh, it comes to the major fire on Main Street. The drama is going. Uh, 270-something, 272. It's in the 200s. And um, there's no loss of life. There's no personal injury. Uh, but uh, I'm feeling interrupted today. <coughs> and I appreciate you thinking about it. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Sullivan to run through a document that you have in front of you, uh, which is a request for qualifications that were developed uh, <coughs> with uh, respect to the town accountant's position. Uh, Mr. Sullivan? Yeah, if you see, that'll be the, uh, the, doc, the memo document. It'll list the three, the three uh, requests for, uh, for quotations that are being sent out. First would be, well, actually, it wasn't sent in any order. This is just alphabetical here. The first was the Bay State Municipal Accounting Group. The second one was the Financial Advisory Associates Incorporated. And the third one is Nelson Heath and Company. The actual RFQ is in this document as Exhibit A. We won't read through it as I take the entire night there. What I also did was uh, as Exhibit B, I give some information on the Financial Advisory Associates, some of their municipal services to see why we had chosen them. And it also shows some of their past and present clients. For Exhibit C, Mellison and Heath Company also gave similar indication off of their website. What happened was we received a response from the Financial Advisory Associates that they would be that they were not bidding on this, and actually, they're not quoting on this, excuse me. And then the, the second company there, Nelson and Heath, also returned that on uh, Tuesday, yesterday, they, they told us they would not be sending that uh, sending out a, uh, a quote. So that left Bay State Municipal Accounting Group, and on the very last page, as you'll see, a two, two-page quotation on the BMAG, which would be Exhibit D. This is what the Board of Selectmen voted on last night. I'd say this is what you know, they will move forward on this. And uh, as of today, Selectman Holmes and, and Town Council worked together on the contract to send that out to Justin Cole of the Bay State Municipal Accounting Group. And, Justin Cole indicated that he is looking through the contract. I was hoping to hear back from him. I, I could have the email right now. Um, it uh, could be any moment now, actually. So as soon as I receive that indication, I will update the Board of Selectmen, specifically the chair and the board, and I'll let the Finance Committee know as well. Any questions? Mr. McDonald? Not for you. They gave any reason why they didn't bid, or they just said we're not bidding. One of them said that the the scope of the work wouldn't. Uh, they didn't feel that they they could meet that, whether it be the staffing or what. And then uh, Nelson and Heath actually came in a, a day later, and they apologized for that and said that they just they would not be sending a response on this. And this contract goes through the end of December, so December thirty first, two thousand eleven. I think this is a great bargain. Eighty dollars an hour for professional services. Sixty-six. Sixty-six dollars and twenty-two cents an oh, hour. Sorry, then my math is wrong. Sixty-six dollars an hour for, for for an account. Is that is that correct? Yeah. Sixty-six dollars. I thought it was eighty. I apologize. Sixty-six dollars. Seems low to me. I, uh, I know that some contractors would be a lot higher, so I'm, I think we've all, we all are excited about this and to get this put through in the scope of services that they're doing as they've listed in there. Uh, I think we're all excited about to see how this relationship works out. If, if I might ask a further question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. We talked to other towns that they work for, we vetted them. 
Uh, we've talked to West Boylston. I don't believe that they were using them. Well, we went through, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, Member Paulson. We went through the Massachusetts Municipal Managers Association, uh, which is uh, probably the highest level of any that I know of in Massachusetts. Uh, and what we heard was, if you check the MMA site out, that a lot of towns are chasing town accountants for months. Belmont just hired, uh, they were out there for seven, eight months. Um, Acton, Dartmouth, North Borough, um, the list goes on and on and on. Because think of it in these terms. We're at the peak season for tax uh, issues, uh, local taxation, uh, and some uh, cities classification, and, and setting tax rate, and getting a lot of that work done. So this is a two month relationship, and then uh, we intend to put it back out uh, based on uh, advice from Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee, uh, and look for a longer term contract, say through the end of the fiscal year, uh, for either uh, services or uh, look again for a town accountant. Um, I know Member Gray and Southern Beggy is, is here with us, and I know Mr. Chairman, you said um, there was not a uh, robust pool of town accountants, bodies, if you will, out there. So when you can get um, a firm like BMAG uh, to give you a quotation at the high peak time of the season, um, I, I think it's well worth the dollars that we're going to be spending. Mr. Chairman, if I might just continue with my question because I don't really think it was answered. I asked a question that was very specific. I will ask the question again. Through the chair, the, please. Yes, through if, the if, chair. Through, I asked Mr. Chairman, I said through you. I asked a question. I asked the question again. Were these people vetted? I, I, and and part, uh, part of the answer what, that I got was, well, things are very busy. Well, things are very busy right now. That would indicate to me that the rate should be higher rather than lower. And as a consequence of that, I will ask the question to you, Mr. Chairman, yes. again, mm -hmm. and if I have to, I'll ask for the third and the fourth time. Were these people vetted and with what towns? Can answer the question? Actually, the, the number one person that we used was our VADAR accounting system. When, <coughs> when they had questions, when we asked the questions of VADAR, our former town accountant or other town accountants, this was just Justin Cole was the gentleman that VADAR went to and ask them whether it was part of answering the accounting questions or writing up part of the, uh, how they would build the package for, for VADAR there. I think that's, since that's our accounting system, I think that's one of the best things we could do because that, we, that way we're not waiting to train somebody. We're getting right on the ground floor and running. I will, I'm just gonna ask it one more time to try to make it clear did we or did we not talk to other towns? Yes. And so, how Mr. many Chair. other towns? Through the chair, please. Mr. 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 Answer Chair. the question through the chair. I'm sorry, I misunderstood because maybe I, I don't understand the term vetted in the way it's being put forward. We checked every reference on the Bay State Municipal Kind group list. I talked personally to Member Paulson, through you, Mr. Chairman, the town administrator in Grafton. I talked to the town administrator in Northborough, in Oxbridge. I talked to the financial services person in Cambridge. I talked to all the people that were listed, and then even further, they're, 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 as Mr. Calvin has indicated, we checked with the uh, lead representative from VEDA, Ted Cormier. What, is, what, have, what has been your experience? Because we really need a firm to hit the ground running here. So in terms of vetting, talking directly to the administrators and or managers and the rep key representative from VEDA, um, I believe that we have checked all the references thoroughly, and uh, <coughs> I'm happy to provide you with that list if you like, Mr. Chairman. Well, would you please do so? Actually, you send it to all the committee members. Sure thing. I appreciate it. Mr. Trudell? Mr. Chairman, through you to the town administrator. While this is going on, who will continue to be the town council? Answer the question. Do you, Mr. Chairman? BMAG, the lead principal, Justin Cole, will be the town accountant. And thus report directly to you. That's Mr. correct. Thank you. Follow up. Mr. Gray. Um, as a member of the group who were uh, 
talking to each of these people. I would, would like to just go on record as saying I was very much impressed with these people. I think they will do an excellent job. Um, I think the response from data which you outlawed uh, was very good and um, I didn't talk to them directly but as it was reported to me. Please address the um, chair. And uh, I think they'll do a great job. One other thing that I would add is that they indicated that um, when we want to get a town accountant, that they took as part of their job that they would help us with the, uh, with the interviewing process and the choice of the accountant and that they would uh, help in the changeover, that they would work for a month or two months uh, with a new accountant. I think it's a, I think it's a bargain and is uh, much less expensive than we had uh, budgeted for for a, an accountant. There will be, assuming we do get a town accountant, there will be a doubling up of both these people and the town accountant for a couple of months, but the savings that we'll make before then will more than make up for it. Um, I was very much impressed, and I must admit that I started off <coughs> by being somewhat negative in that I thought, you know, we don't really need a, a consultant, we need an accountant in here. Um, and, you know, having heard him and having seen him, um, I very much changed my mind on that. So I think, uh, I think he's these people are going to be good. I hope I'm not disappointed, but I, I think it's a very good bet. Any other questions? Comments? Can, can we, we I know they're going to be real busy, but any chance of them coming to the finance committee and meeting us? Or? My understanding is they were very smart. They put a stipulation in here as to how many times they could meet <laughs> in, the hour, in, in, the, in, the, in the evenings. Okay, that's that's part of the problem. But uh, I would suspect that if they were in on Fridays and we were around, could we visit with them for a couple minutes? Of course, Mr. Chairman, to the to current member uh, McDonald, and and I think that's an important part uh, because what I also saw um, to Sam's point through you, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. uh, was an individual who had been through this process before. You know, I don't think you can understate that. Uh, and by the way, we're not paying health care or pension costs. I, I know this body has, has talked about that at least for the past several years. So that has to be noted for the record in that, that number, uh, $66 and change. So uh, I'm happy to try to arrange something. I'd like to get let him get his feet on the ground with this team. And we can move from there and certainly introduce them to the Mr. Um, one of the <laughs> things that was asked them was uh, would you be willing to meet with the various committees and uh, people in the evening and uh, the response was very much so, you know, and that he commented that if we wanted him to do so every night of the week, he certainly was not willing to do so. <laughs> and uh, he commented, you know, I don't think it makes much sense for me to go to the Finance Committee every time they have a meeting, but certainly I'm willing to meet with the Finance Committee and for, you know, uh, from time to time as required, etc. So I think that is very much open. Sam, committee like to make a request. Um, we have a very busy schedule next week, I will tell you that much. But uh, just to, uh, if I might, to uh, clarify something, the question you asked the town administrator, and I think I understand the, the it's a question, but I want to make sure that I understand the answer. I think you asked, uh, the town administrator said he talked to people in Grafton. Uxbridge and Cambridge, some other towns, and you asked him for essentially his, his notes on that. 
I want to make sure. I asked him for the list of who he had talked to, right. so and we can follow up later on. Specifically, but I want to make sure that we specific that he specifically talked to those towns about this particular firm. That's the the question. Mr. Chairman, I think that's the part. We had damages in the That's the fact. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to rule that out. I'm sorry. I'm going to rule out a positive discussion. You can rule out a order. Mr. Ann. Okay. I mean, you know, the question was directed towards have you talked to people about the company. Now, why would he state otherwise? That, that's, that, 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 I'm sorry. That's out of order. One of the things that did happen on this whole process was Sam requested if I would also attend. I'm sorry, Donna. I just want to. Set my opinion out there for you, Mr. Chairman, that I, we had a very competent person that sat on that committee, and as far as I'm concerned, he, he gave us a, you know, he gave us a good description as well as the town administrator, and I mean, um, I'm very comfortable with Mr. Gray's recommendation. Um, else? Well, I, I, Mr. I have no, no need to personally meet with these people. I mean, you know, so you also know, though, I think it should, it should also be entered even to our records. At Sam's request, I did attend the second interview that was held with this individual. And after they talked about all the accounting stuff, we got into some of the more, some of the very important stuff. Confidentiality agreements, insurance certificates, sureties, bonds, all right, mm -hmm. record keeping, uh, possession of records, et cetera, sign-in, sign-outs, all those types of stuff. He obviously is very familiar with town procedures. He's very familiar with the role of a town accountant because he's been one for six years. All right, and I have to say, any question that I asked, I want to take him, Sam, two seconds to answer it. All right, he was right on top of everything, including you know, our office is key coded, our files are key coded. We, you know, we have our, uh, I guess each town's accounts are passworded, et cetera, on the computer systems, et cetera. So we not only talk to him about how he relate to us, but we also talk to him as to how he's doing the business. And I think that was, high, I know that was my highest degree of comfort was he seemed to know exactly that if he went to a state convention or something, there was no discussion about where I am, he's the Uxbridge Town County. Yes. I just wanted to follow up with, with my, my first question, and is I would think it would maybe be um, behoove us to let them get in and get their feet wet before we ask them to come before us. I mean, what can they say other than their experience that they've already said to the committee in that? I mean, we don't have the right to make the decision. I want to see what kind of results they're going to produce. So my suggestion would be let let them in, let them start doing their work, and then invite them here. All right. my, well, su my suggestion would be we are meeting the 16th, and the next meeting, I think, is the first week of December. Mm -hmm. And probably, from what you're saying, it sounds like it would be the best time to ask them to come in and see us. Can you agree on that? Mm -hmm. I'll send it out to the, the, the administration for that effect. Mr. Andrews, I'm sorry. If you oh, want no, to no, continue. I think Ron, thank you, Mr. Andrews, Brock made an excellent point. Let's let the let, let settlement in uh, because in, in that sense, they, they really need to get that, that line to get up to speed. Um, and you know what? I'll ask Justin when when he feels comfortable, but you know, just, we can give him a, a couple of dates uh, and then let him decide uh, what's best for uh, the actual <coughs> But I fully support it uh, to give, obviously, a bit of perspective here. And, uh, and I appreciate uh, both uh, Donna's and Bonnie's comments on uh, the findings. I want to thank Mr. Gray for his work, uh, not only on this second search, but on the first search, which kind of tells you something about what we're facing, not just as a town, but as a community, a, a level of communities across the Commonwealth. And uh, people have time to go on the MMA side. I encourage you to do that. And check the dates when the towns have been out looking for town accountants. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you see. Um, I've already done that. Okay. I do have one additional question. Is this a search committee or a screening committee? Screening committee. It's a screening committee. Yes. yes. So they are not actively in the market seeking anyone. Basically, what's happening is they're valuing what's coming in. Say, say again? They're not actively out recruiting. They're reviewing what's coming in. Recruiting is being done by your office. The amazing proposals are coming to you, and then they're screening them. Yes, that's correct. Okay, there's a big difference between search and screen. A huge difference. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. It, it, it has been a hallmark of what I tried to get accomplished in, in, in my tenure to involve key players for the first time. Here's real quick: a member of the school department, the finance financial lawyer, and the finance committee, uh, the town treasurer collector, 
uh, and obviously a member of the board of selectmen, that I've always tried, for, whether it be the library director or the town accountant or the whoever. So uh, I'm just saying that to you because I think that's a way of getting individuals up to speed and then having that lives and come back. And, and I, I think I've heard from Don and Bonnie uh, for the fine confidence and the fine work that Mr. Gray has done. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, on item B, uh, you have in front of you, and I spoke to this issue of uh, legislation that was pending. Uh, if you recall, I indicated that the uh, October 25th uh, town meeting that the town had been tracking uh, with help from the Mass Municipal Association, House Bill 3737. Uh, it was a bill that was introduced after the states closed its books uh, on October 1st. And what essentially happened there uh, was a surplus of $130 million. And what the uh, House Ways and Means Committee, uh, under the leadership of uh, I Representative Brian Dempsey, uh, submitted uh, House 3737, separating out one half of that, 65 million, uh, to satisfy needs at the state level, uh, whether it be state police all the time or other issues that they had, and 65 million dollars for cities and towns. <coughs> What, the, what, the, what that did for us, as I indicated earlier, uh, and the governor signed this bill on the 27th, uh, I gave a report to the body on the 25th that uh, as he signed it, it became Chapter 142 of the Act of 2011, which provided to the town uh, $121,001 to you, Mr. Chairman, the body, that provided us with a restoration to the fiscal 2011 level of unrestricted governmental aid, uh, and that's listed uh, on the second page. Um, it basically brings us from $1.55 million to $1.67 million in that vicinity, um, and what it amounts to, and just so you know, I'm not taking anything for granted, I asked the town treasurer, collector, to provide me with the deposit slip into the bank account. So we knew that we have it, and it's attached. I'm glad to see you have finally met our standard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Paulson. I didn't mean to usurp you, sir. <laughs> it's taken me about a year and a half, but I have. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, and, and my, my thoughts on this, I mentioned this to my board of selectmen last night. I don't have any ideas on this. I'm open to ideas except that I think it's prudent at this moment in time just to hold it and let's, let's see how things uh, play through, uh, if you will. Um, and um, I, I just want to also, one last point, um, it will be from my interaction, at least in, in, on the initial phases of the submission of the 2013 state budget, part of our unrestricted uh, local aid. And that, that comes to the town side, because I'll hock it back just a minute. We got cut. 3% uh, of uh, the total local aid and the, um, uh, the promise was at that time if we had any money left over at the end of fiscal 2011, we'll try to get that into the fiscal 2012 uh, local aid process and the legislature and the governor have come to agreement that we receive the money as I indicated uh, on the 31st of uh, October. So that's a report on uh, state funding at this point. I'm happy to answer any questions if I have. Any questions? I do have Go one ahead. question on this, uh, and that is um, to expend these funds, uh, is, does this have to go through town meeting, or is this normal course, or as far as how these can be expended? Do we need to have an uh, appropriation made at the special town meeting in the April, or? I mean, or well, we say it's funded, we're going to leave the funds out there, but what does that mean? The three, the three options yeah. on the front page? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't read. <laughs> sorry, we're Tom. just trying to get you to the, to the same standard that we have in the administration, Mr. Chairman. Okay, fine. <laughs> Are you done, Mr. Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Okay, you spent all your capital in one sentence. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Enough of that, no one else have any other questions? Anyone have any intelligent questions? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Andrews, thank you for coming on my last item. Mr. Chairman, I, I, have, seen, I have been in contact uh, literally uh, daily with uh, Jim Powers and Howard and Sullivan, uh, and they are, uh, fr first of all, working to close down, as I indicated at the last meeting, the audit processes for fiscal 10 and 11. Um, 
I believe that, that now knowing that we have uh, and have kind of on board, um, they'll be able to inter interact uh, and uh, work uh, closely with respect to uh, the uh, second part of the question, which is uh, there is no penalty for missing any of the timetables we've indicated and been totally transparent with our representative from the Department of Revenue relative to, to where we are with the town accountant and the process of filing things like Schedule A. They're aware of where we are. I was uh, informed by the uh, town accountants uh, and uh, Jim Powers indicated that uh, he had spoken and we confirmed back uh, through Mr. Sullivan that uh, they are where we, they know where we are, they know we're working to set the tax rate. As of today, if you walk down Town Hall in, on the first floor by the assessor's office, you would have met one of the DOR representatives from the assessing side, from the assessment side, Grace Sandell, uh, was in the building. And it's a normal process to get the assessors off the ground, get their evaluations, get their reports, and then work with, once again, the town accountant and the treasurer, respectively, uh, to round out uh, the, the rest of the filings that are needed to have, obviously, in place before we set the tax rate. So that's what Mr. Powers has informed me of, and I'm relaying it to the committee as I get to the board of selectmen. Any questions? Just the time parameters in terms of when we should file. And Answer the question. Schedule A. Schedule A. Uh, we're working on it and now having Justin on the ground, uh, hopefully by the Friday. Yeah, that's why we're requesting him to the end of Friday. You know, I'll be better able to give you an, a, a, an estimate, but the, the, the schedule A has to be filed between now and December 31st. Wasn't it originally October 31st? That's a normal uh, timeline, uh, of which, from what I understand, 50% of the communities don't need that, that, that deadline. Well, um, does the Department of Revenue require a request for an extension or a waiver? We, we have informed them of our situation. We've kept them totally abreast. I'm, I'm not familiar with any waiver except that we've communicated with them, and Mr. Powers has communicated with them from his uh, level from his firm. I sent out an if I may, I sent out an email to our DOR rep asking if there was anything specifically we needed to, to file or fill out a waiver, use that term, and he said no. Okay. As long as we've done that, then yeah, that's, we, and we have it writing from him that we're all set. Then he wrote back what I need to do once we get all that ready. So I think he was giving me a hint, so that was fine. Okay, free cash calculation, was there a date on that as far as that, or is that requirement, is, I'm sorry, is that in association with the Schedule A? That is in association with the Schedule A and also the audits. Okay. And they're aware of our status on all of that? Yes, they are. Any questions? Bonnie? So I'm just looking for clarification, Mr. Chairman, so we're talking about not having full um, idea of 2010, 2011 till December 31st. Is that where I'm going? No, 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 no. Sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Okay. The Schedule A and other documentation on the recap sheet are due to the Department of Revenue, so we can't set the tax rate by December 31st. <coughs> That's what I understood from the point of state filings. Am I, am I correct, Mr. Chairman? Yes. So the Schedule A and other reports that are due through the recap sheet. Um, I fully expect the other, the, sec the first piece, the audits to be completed uh, sometime in the month of November. And then that will be the basis by which we file those second reports, because you have to have the audits to file them. Okay. The November timeline is, as that have been suggested by Powers and Sullivan? Um, th th they're working on giving us a date, mm -hmm. right? The estimation that I was given that it would be sometime in the month of November. Okay. Of this year. Good. That was an intelligent question. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Paulson? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try from one here. I, I'm going back now to the April letter from DOR, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. and I seem to recall that they were very specific about our having a, an audited statement before they would go forward with setting the tax rate. So if I'm wrong in that, or at least correct my impression so that we understand here that, that there may be another piece to this puzzle before we can set the tax rate. Okay. Does anybody else remember this? Yes, I th but I thought it was the free cash calculation. That yeah. Well, the free cash calculation comes out of the commission. <coughs> we well, don't they, wanted, they wanted certified statements to do their work. They, 
they want an audited statement. That audited was in that statement. letter, as uh, I recall. I don't know. Audited by to answer the question? Mr. Chairman, in the audited statements of the balance sheets, the balance sheets are going to be critical to the Department of Revenue. It's what, what's required for the mm -hmm. recapture. So the, the, the answer to the question is yes, the balance sheets, which are part of the audit process, will be submitted to the Department of Revenue in order to set the tax rate. How quickly would the Department of Revenue turn the information around? I mean, are we looking at a 30, 45 day, 60 day window, or uh, are they aware of our situation they would try to push it through for us? Uh, I'm not going to speak can, for the Who can we write to? <laughs> you can write to whoever you'd like to, Mr. Chairman. But um, I believe the process by which we have laid down the foundation of communication with our representative and also uh, individuals from the accounting firm uh, interacting with the Department of Revenue on their work schedules uh, is important. Um, but but the, the um, main ingredient here is that um, I believe, I think I'll double check the date because uh, Mr. Foster had them. We set the tax rate somewhere around the week of uh, Christmas week last year and the year before. So it is late December. It's not like they're going to set, but I, I also believe they have a cadre of cities and towns that each of the representatives uh, for the Department of Revenue handles. And um, I've been very encouraged by what we've got back from Jerry Curtis with regards to the, the overall process. So uh, that's what we're shooting for in terms of understanding uh, and getting the, the tax rate set you know, sometime in that same timeline. Any other questions? Well, just again, my memory is my, I think my memory is correct. It's DOR one and one, and I assume wants a an audited statement. And to your question, which I think is a good one, and I, I think I understand it, is if we were to get them the audited statement, and I'll, I'll take a figure here, in sometime in December, they're going to have to take presumably some time to audit it or to examine it, and we may not be able to set the tax rate in time. I'm just I'm, I'm hypothesizing here. That's a possibility, uh, but I would think that they would give it a high priority because they don't want to be blamed for us not being able to set our tax rate. Um, I imagine it takes several hours. The question is, you need to take several days, or how, what their workload is. We don't know. Four one, one is four. four one. I fully agree. Uh, will you? We do not meet weekly in the months of November and December. Will you be keeping the board of selectmen informed on a weekly basis as to the progress? of the audits and the schedules. Uh, as I have, Mr. Chairman, through you to, to the body, keep the Board of Selectmen uh, updated as new information comes through. And I, I have been doing that uh, through uh, Chairman Cruz and the uh, entire entire uh, body, I, uh, Board of Selectmen. Uh, I'd be happy to do that. Um, but once again, um, we will be, uh, once we get Mr. Um, Paul uh, on the ground, I'll get a better sense as to where things are standing with regards to the specific timelines that we've set for ourselves. Okay, I'd recommend all the committee members Tuesday night spending your time with this report should be within the first hour. Uh, and we'll be listening. Thank you. Any other questions? I have an off-topic question. No need, Jen. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, only because it bugged my mind today and I was just curious. Um, in reference to the um, generator situation at the police department, yes. Um, just briefly, can you tell us what our status is going to be in in that? You know, if we can't do anything about it until Springtown meeting, what are the odds of uh, a bad nor'easter and we're losing power over there? Could we address that at the next meeting? Okay. And let's get it from the official folks. All right, I would appreciate would that. Would that be satisfactory with you? I'm happy to do that, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. So I'll put that on as an agenda item. Will you put the ambulance on there, too, please? I don't seem to have it on. I think if anybody had it, you could. I need to clear yeah. out my stuff there. Anything else? Any other questions? John Administrator? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put those on the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope the fire is out. Thank you. Is this is the first floor? Yeah. 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 Ye
19. Need a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah. 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 It would have been the Wednesday before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Everybody was um, here except David. Mm -hmm. okay. Except David. So, we've got any ad additions or corrections to the minutes? Sure. Say so now, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No abstentions. Uh, next item would be the minutes of October 24th, which would have been the night of the town meeting. I believe everybody except David Ross is there. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so moved. Second. Second. Second from Mr. Gray. Any additions or corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Abstain. Mr. Rudell abstains. Um, how do you review? That would be the next item that I'd like to address. Um, comments? It was pretty much, I put this on here in case somebody wanted to. Um, you know, I, I think we were, it was, it was very successful. That's my take on it. I was very, very disappointed on, <coughs> on the Article 1 that the, that the particularly the school buses and the ambulance did not get. I personally, I, I just can't for the life of me understand if, if, they, if you've only got two ambulances running in the town and they're turning in over $300,000, why you wouldn't just give them their money? I mean, <coughs> the harbor master had no problem. And I was really, and, and the school buses, I, I, just, I just don't see people taking them as seriously as they should be taken, Mr. Chairman. And I, uh, you know, I was, I was very, I'm, I'm puzzled why everything was pulled. And it, 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 does anybody know why? I mean, on Article 1, because I'm, I'm, I'm frankly, I'm just puzzled why a town who gets up and preaches safety, 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 lets the ambulances go by and lets, let's school bus the children go by. No, I think that was discussed, in, in, well, after the motion was made, there was discussion, and I think the answers were pretty obvious at that point. Mr. Lyle, what happened? Mr. McDonald? Well, it wasn't obvious to me. Was somebody just explain what happened to me? Voters decided it. Town meeting is town meeting. Laura said. Well, I think the view from the station was that it was pretty obvious that the school bus was I think the view from the stage is a lot different than the view from the audience. Um, you use a lot more emotion when you're in the audience, and what we've seen and gone through with this committee, you, you, it's a lot more analytical to a certain degree. Um, now there were times I don't, I don't feel, I feel like people, I don't want to say respected the decisions or respected the fin, fincom, but I think we, we weren't the goat, if you will, from the town meeting. But the, the, the. The body of town meeting, it was clear which way they were going. Whether or not any one of us agreed with that, that's the body and that's where they were going. And I don't know, I don't think the word successful, you know, what is it? I believe our, our illustrious chairman once said, nobody wins 
Uh, and he's right, nobody wins. Uh, it's just, we have some problems in town we need to fix. And once we fix those problems, I think we'll, we'll, uh, Find you <laughs> whatever she said. <laughs> Mr. Paulson? You know, I, uh, as it pertains to the ambulances, I had asked a question uh, several meetings ago and regarding the uh, Medicare reimbursements. Not getting an answer, and Dick Paulson being Dick Paulson, I picked up the phone and called the American Ambulance Association down in Washington, and I found some things out. That, uh, just a little background on this. We have high fixed costs, essentially, with regard to the ambulances. And if the reimbursements come down, we're going to start to get squeezed. The question is, how are they going to come down? And if they are, how much? From what I can gather, talking with the lobbyists down in uh, Washington, it looks like there's 4% at least is going to be cut. And that should be factored into our thinking. It doesn't sound like a lot. And to be honest with you, I don't know how many dollars it is, but we've got the cost up here probably not coming down and we've got the revenue that's coming this way and I think we have to as a committee understand the, the consequences of that and quite frankly I don't think it's up to us you know, as individuals to have to sort that out. I would hope that the administration would come to us with these kinds of uh, with this kind of analysis and say here's the situation, here's where the revenues are going to be and they're not going to be good or they're going to be exceptional. Mm -hmm. So. That's a little bit of background, if you will. <coughs> can I, can I, can I, I'm sorry. Uh, another thing we have to throw in there, and I just found out about this from reading, was something called the Burgess Plan, which is, I guess, where they can sign up for services in town for relatives, which is like $50, $50 a year. And of course, I don't know how many people have signed up for that, but I would assume that a great deal of the, the senior population may or may not have signed up. Maybe Bonnie can address it, but yeah, it's so something to consider too. Program. Yeah. Well, it's still out there. It's a very old program, and I, and I believe you have to fit the financial criteria okay. um, to do to actually fit into that. It was an old, um, you know, way back when you you didn't if you were a resident of this town, you never paid for insurance. Right? No, it didn't. was a residence privilege, mm -hmm. um, and that was part of part of that. But still active? I, I yes. believe it is. It yeah. is. So that's a critical piece of what you're talking about. And, you know, regard, it's a revenue problem. It reduces revenue. I would suggest, you know, the next item on the agenda is the 2013 budget. Items such as this, we need to start sort of compiling a list, maybe to pass to the town administrator and say, as you're putting your budgets together with your department heads, might you consider addressing these issues? Uh, and then also when we meet with the department heads at that point, since they've been forewarned, we could ask you know, what they have found out and, and how, if, you know, what they've done in the course of developing their budget to address that issue. Uh, I would say that. Um, I'm trying to think. You're ignoring the sandwiches. Well, no, I'm going to come back to sandwiches and see if we're going to do that. Um, Send all your suggestions to the chair. Mr. Gray. I just wanted to pick up one point um, in comparing these expenditures to the Harbor Master expenditures. Just wanted to point out that the Harbor Master's funds were coming from a special account rather than, our, than the general mm -hmm. fund mm -hmm. and can't be used for any purpose other than. I know that. Um, Marine funds. So it's it's just I I know that comment was made during town meeting, and mm -hmm. I just uh, trying to clarify because uh, I think uh, if it was coming out of general funds, I think the reaction would have been very different <laughs> from what it was. It would would be my guess. <laughs> I'm happy that they got what they wanted. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to, but I just, I would have been a lot happier to see at least two buses in, a, in, the, in that ambulance fixed. You know? but, that, but I, 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 I have no so qualms. Well, I have no qualms about <laughs> that. The harbor mass, I, I think, is wonderful. That's right. Mrs. Um, 
my overall um, perspective on town meeting is first off that um, I think that we were re well organized and prepared this year. Um, as far as getting everything done for the book that needed to be done, I think went smoothly better than it ever has before. Um, we finally got that right. That's that's good. Um, I was disappointed with the changes just prior to town meeting and those issues that um, was, you know all of a sudden we're going to switch tracks. Um, that is a little confusing, and it kind of feels like. You know, the thing con gets left out in you know, <laughs> at the last minute. <laughs> so um, I, I don't appreciate that. But as a whole, I think it went very, very well. Um, in, I mean, all but one article completed in two days. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from, from the chair, I'd like to compliment. Uh, the chairman of the board of selectmen. The board of selectmen did an excellent job of getting the information to us, so we were able to include it in the printed warrant, all right, um, on its various votes, etc. The comments I received back from a lot of people who talked to me is they really appreciated the comments from the FinCom, the fact that we supported our votes, not just stated what they were, and in some cases that we did present both sides of the coin. Even if they disagreed with us, they were glad to hear why. And of course, in some of our votes, we were very much split. And mm -hmm. people found that to be even better because it meant that they, I guess they felt that it gave them more opportunity to split. All right. Um, I think the arguments that we did present uh, were sound. Uh, I hope that we helped. Uh, over time, I think we'll hear some more back. I imagine there'll be some criticism. Hopefully, there'll be more confidence and see what goes from there. Uh, in the meantime, see you in April, as they say. Mr. Chairman, just one comment, Mr. Chairman. And I think it, it, it was a, a, a collaborative. Uh, the, the town moderator, you can't give her enough credit for what she did, too, and working with the folks on petition articles and, and making sure that I have to agree. I think this was the cleanest um, warrant and the most uh, clearest that I've, I've had the opportunity to see it, and I want to commend you on your work with it because you and, 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 and whomever worked with you on it, because I think you just did a terrific, terrific job. Well, that was a great segue to my last comment, and that is that Ms. Barrasso, a fabulous job. You did a great job. Very I mean, good. You had all the patience in the world of all of us, whether it was the board of select and the moderator or the FinCom. Thank you very much. We went very, very well this year. Don't want to go to your house. No, that's a race. Somebody bring up a bunch of carry items. Uh, um, it's the 2013 budget. I put it on here because I want to remind everybody it was really getting to full swing. Mr. Dell, correct me if I'm wrong, November 15th is when the capital planning first numbers come in, right? The buck has to land there. I have the last update from Mr. Slavin regarding the uh, town maintenance department. I will incorporate that prior to our next meeting, which I believe will occur on Monday the 7th of November. And with luck, we'll be able to lock up that uh, in an Excel format so that the town administrator and his assistant, Derek, can put together what they have to give to the selectmen. The selectmen have been provided. Selectmen, and I think I gave it to the finance committee, but as I keep saying, as I get older, I forget my distributions, but I know that the um, last meeting, um, I believe Ms. Bagley was there, um, I provided, uh, that I believe the chairman got a copy of the Excel spreadsheet where we are. We have not prioritized that because that's not our function. We have not addressed the question of, of financing because that is one of our tasks. Um, because just putting this together has been a challenge. But we will meet the criteria of having it in time to the town administrator 
So he has time to work the data before he gives it to the boys like me. Uh -huh. um, Mr. Chairman, I, I was wondering if you If, if we can think about having a, I hate to use the word committee, to a, 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 an unbiased group put together to make the recommendations of the plant capital planning to the to the town meeting folks, participation from the board of selectmen, participation from the uh, uh, finance committee, and participation from uh, the schools, uh, definitely capital planning. I mean, and, and, and I think that it, it might it might serve as a good uh, a goodwill situation to 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 come together on what everyone's prioritizing. In other words, a group of us have sat down and we feel the need for this this, and and have everybody at the table, like the school, the, the town. Just a suggestion. Mr. Trudeau. One of the difficulties, one of the good things of the town charter it provides capital planning for the direct report to the town administrator. And if he chooses to use us and use us well, we're there to serve him. However, once we put that report to the town administrator, while he may submit it to the board of selectmen, and you would, of course, receive a copy. Mm -hmm. The reality is that it is his choice of projects. This is where there is a failing <clears throat> in this one particular area because I personally, therefore I speak only for myself in this particular area, felt that the town administrator could have involved the capital planning committee before he went with his recommendations for town meeting. He did not do so and therefore did not get from the capital planning committee the kind of buy-in that you would hope as a town administrator going into town meeting that the capital planning committee would be able to say, we we buy into what he is recommending. That did not occur. To your point, um, you can go through, you can make recommendations, but you are going to have to convince the town administrator what you truly believe the priorities are going to be. It is his call. But I, I, excuse me, Jim, I think we, we need to convince the Board of Selectmen because they're his boss. By charter, it is the town administrator's call. That's correct. The board select, but it is by charter. I mean, it's, you know, I, I think whatever you can conform consensus, it's the thing to do. Okay. Right? And I would hope the town administrator would feel that way. And as, as Mr. Trudell said, it's not a matter of anyone approving what he's saying, but that they buy in as well. All right? But if they don't buy in 100%, it's his, it's his job. And, and he may know things that are not public knowledge or knowledge to the committee at that time. But it, but it opens the door for a discussion. And it behooves everyone because when we go to the town meeting and we all agree some sort or, or come up and say, okay, you know, I would have liked to see this come first for that, but but this is what is needed to be, the town's folks will listen. Mm -hmm. But if we go in <coughs> they said and you said, they're, you know, I think I understand what she's what she's getting at. Thanks. Because if everybody agrees, if the people involved agree that this needs to come first and that purchase needs to be next and that one, regardless of whether they're a special interest group or they're on the school side or they're a, a policeman or whatever, that was a problem. Because this one wants what they want and that one wants what they want. But everybody has to agree, agree as to what the biggest priority is. And if that's worked out in advance of town meeting, then you have a lot less, lot less fighting on the board. A lot more success. <coughs> the word finance has come up a couple of times, and then Bonnie touched on something. She didn't mention finance, but she touched on changes in a 
kind of paraphrasing what you said, Fine, I apologize, uh, that happened just before town meeting. And one of the things that did happen was that the outside consultant, is it Southwest? I think that's their name, but they... The bonding company? Yes, they Southwest. issued a ruling that in effect said that we could not, or should not, I guess could not actually, go forward on the leasing plan, which changed things mm -hmm. dramatically. Mm -hmm. And just at the 11th hour. Mm -hmm. I thought at the time, and I still think, and I would suggest that we all think about this and perhaps ask for further clarification on this, as to what it was that, I shouldn't say this at Halloween, spooked them, but I'll say it nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that troubled them. There's something, something about our finances as it pertained to leasing troubled them, and that changed the whole complexion of the, the leasing programs, to Bonnie's point and to your point as well, perhaps indirectly. And I would like to get, personally, and I would hope that the committee would also like to get it in a town, an answer as to exactly what, what happened that so dramatically affected their thinking and therefore affected town meeting. My understanding is, and I'll confirm it, was that the article as, the motion as written, was to borrow to lease. And every bond company will hesitate, will spook when they hear that, because you don't bond for operational expenses. You bond for long term. All right, I'll confirm that. But as written, we were mixing items that should be bonded, or could be bonded, bonded and we were mixing operational expenses. And that spooks them right there. That spooked me. You don't borrow for operational expenses. So and that was one of the reasons why, emphatically, we and I thought we all understood that we wanted to divide the question, not just to make sure that every item would be addressed, but also the fact that they had mixed leases and purchases, which you don't do. Mm -hmm. right? because, and the original motion as written, all right, was written pretty much like the article was. It did not narrow it to borrow. And as soon as it did, it was a major problem. I think that the last four to five days before, there were several discussions about the wording. And the wording was the problem. You can't borrow the lease. Not with most of the bond is concerned. But I will confirm that. I will confirm that. That was, that was going to be my comment. I think that's re regardless of what was going to happen. That article was written poorly from the standpoint of how it addressed what we needed. And and that's probably why the bonding company didn't like it because it was a mix of borrowing and leasing. And also, again, we talked about this over and over again on this committee is that it, it only addressed six months of a lease, too. It didn't address the entire lease which was another issue on that article. We were only voting for six months of payment on an entire lease. So I believe they would have to come back to town meeting in April to get the approval for the remainder of that lease. So it was just poorly written from that standpoint, I think. Okay. Any other comments? You any more capital planning? I was going to respond uh, to one of the issues of dealing with um, some four years ago when I was trying to get capital planning off the ground. Um, at the time, the town administrator didn't deal with capital planning. Uh, his successor, Mr. McCullough, he could handle it. But the key thing that went on was that the selectmen took the position that there was no money Therefore, we won't talk about capital planning. Um, and, and the ensuing years, or the preceding years, to, to them officially saying that to me was we did nothing on the capital planning. Mm -hmm. To your point of trying to, to get it prioritized and what things needs to be done, I think it's commendable to just have to realize that done, you're going to have to sit down across from the TA and convince them that these are the priorities that the Selectman Finance Committee and Capital Planning think should be presented. Um, my sensing is this might be a challenge. 
we can address it when we get to it. That uh, would be correct. I don't see that now, Sam. Um, you know, I guess uh, we've all commented on this before, but part of the capital planning, of course, is, is the school bus issue. And one thing that I found very difficult at the last town meeting was to be voting on two buses where we didn't have an overall plan. We obviously have a problem, and that, whether that uh, is 42 buses or it's 38 buses or whatever it is, it's somewhere in that area. Um, that number seems to change depending on what you need. But I feel very strongly that before any uh, issue goes before the town meeting, meeting with regard to school buses, that we have to have an overall plan as to what we're doing. Buying two buses doesn't solve the problem. We've got to have a plan as to what we're going to do, whether we're going to lease buses, whether we're not going to lease buses, if we're going to buy buses, how many do we need each year in order to do this. This type of planning, I think, is absolutely necessary. Uh, this was, um, that was a top, major topic of discussion at last night's select meeting, and my understanding is they, they are spearheading the startup of a group to address the issue. The total structure hasn't been determined yet. Mm -hmm. All right, but the first conversations, I believe, are supposed to start tomorrow. Mr. Cruz, could you? Um, I'm not sure who's in attendance at the meeting, where it is, or what time it is. Uh, could you educate us? Uh, I'm waiting for the final one. As far as I know, that Mr. Swin will be the also. We're supposed to be meeting around 11 30. This is a structured committee. Until uh, we get some final from the town administrator. Do we have the final makeup of the, who those people will be? I think I mentioned it last night. Um, so it's been a hot topic ever since I, I, I it was a hot topic before. All right. I apologize <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I didn't know uh, what was discussed there. I was in Montana, and you know the the uh, TV coverage of the of the uh, <laughs> Slackman <laughs> was not but was not televised. I, I fully understand, but I did talk to the Sioux Nation, and evidently we're looking out your front door. <laughs> no, I, I, or was that the rain dance? <laughs> I, I apologize as well, but I've been taking a class on Tuesday nights, and I, I haven't been able to get up on it I see it in the paper, but. Did, did, can you tell us who, who, who's going to be on that? Did you, I'm sure you, no, you watch it. No, that'll be decided tomorrow. There's, there was a, you know, an extended conversation. All right, there was some discussion as to who would and wouldn't be on the committee, whether or not, even at one point, whether or not there would be an initial group and would there be a long-term group, et cetera. It's in the formation side. Uh, the ch chairman of the board of selectmen has taken charge of the issue. Oh, okay. uh, and we'll just you know, leave it him at this point, and I guess we're all here down the road. But I also heard it last night that it's a very high priority. Oh, that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Good. Very high priority. Good. Um, on the budget also, I remind everybody that we, there's an all-day budget session with the school committee, which last year was great. We had five uh, yeah. people attend. Um, we're going to embarrass Mr. Swipe. Do we have a date on that yet? I'll look and see if I can find it. But uh, I don't have it off the top of my head. If I can find okay. it, I'll let you know. Could you let us know? Because last year that was extremely informative. Mm -hmm. all right. uh, and we had five members, and I didn't talk to a single member that was there all day who said that they were sorry they went. It was a great amount of information. It gave us a real good feel of mm -hmm. what was happening. Yeah. There is also, I would remind everybody, uh, by charter now, there is a meeting that has to be held, I believe, in January, also a public hearing at which our attendance is mandatory. Public so hearing I, um, on the school budget. All right, That's it's right. a public hearing for the school committee at which the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee must attend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and I will get that date to you as soon as it's set. It's usually held in the uh, middle school auditorium, at least that's where it was last year. And again, I would encourage everybody to go because uh, mm -hmm. we've got a tremendous amount of information from the public that night and some pretty good suggestions. Mm -hmm. it, it was just reminding me of the uh, county one, Mr. Chairman, of, of the comments of that the school budget was like some built-in secrecy or something, and <laughs> so open. I mean, we're more well attended than we ever have been, you know. So if they want to be informed, they need to go to these meetings. Well, I have had to live with the comment about a single one out of the school budget. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the ears are still ringing. Um, on the town side, uh, as soon as I get the dates from the town administrator, I still want to meet with the department heads. But I think what's really important this year is if we uh, do come up with some, what, what you would like to see in that process. You know, uh, last year there was a little bit of copying from prior years. We were loose. We found, found it hard to follow. We found pages that didn't truly tie out, etc. And I would hope that we could avoid that this year. And that if uh, there are items of particular interest to us, that we ahead of time ask them to address that, particularly and send, the send, department heads. Send them out a sheet? Of yeah, we send them out a yeah. sheet and say, you know, this is, these are the questions that we have. We get that um, money yeah. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Speck. I don't have a date for the initial uh, presentation of the budget. I do have a date for the public hearing for on the budget is January 18th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have a calendar for that yet. January 18th? Now you're, you're all day meeting with the... I don't have a date for that. But that's, that's usually the first week, right, of January? Last year was like January 5th. It could be later. All right, I'm not going to hold you to it. I just, I'm just trying to give, give people an idea of what to try to keep open. We have three, the only thing that's been definitively scheduled is three meetings in January. Right. Um, the second meeting is the, is the public hearing when everybody is invited to attend now by charter. Right. Well, I'm referring to the one where all the principals I understand. Meeting, you know, that's I understand. the one that's really important to us. I don't have a date for that. Okay. Right, as soon as you have that. Any other new business? You don't have anything? I skipped one item. I know Maybe reorganization. Mm -hmm. um, we'll address that issue on the 16th. All right. Um, for a lot of personal reasons. And some operational efficiency reasons, etc. All right. I'm going to propose that the committee reorganize. Um, I didn't want to Tonight's not the right night to do it because this is the first time people have heard of it. All right, but over the course of the next two weeks, I would hope that you think about it and possibly discuss it with others mm -hmm. as to what you think you should do next. Um, Mrs. Brown? I, I, I'm going to ask you right out, out straight, Mr. Chairman. I, I, you're proposing a reorganization. Are you saying that you resign as chair? That is my plan. Uh, there are things that are very important in the chairmanship. One of them is that you fully understand where your committee is and the fact that you can represent them well. Uh, running a meeting is pretty simple. You just have to be, you know, have a big gavel. Remember Dick's name. Mr. Paulson. All right, et cetera. Running the meetings is one thing, but the other problem, uh, this job also includes a good deal of time with other departments and trying to find solutions. What's extremely difficult here in Wareham is no matter how many hours those people in that room sit, discuss, and work to find solutions and compromises, in the end, when they leave the room, nothing's been accomplished because it falls apart. And it falls apart for many reasons. Some are internal to that group. Some are just a fact of life in the town. Right? And it's, it's very, very difficult. We need solutions. All right? I've been through three town meetings. I've been through two of these ad hocs. We've tried to solve problems that are both fell apart at the start. You know, one of a couple of them fell apart even before we got to the town meeting. All right? And the last group fell apart at the town meeting. 
No, it's not that I don't, it's not that I begrudge the work, it's just I don't see the solutions. And one of the things that was most difficult for me, and I've, you know, I've mentioned this to a couple of people, I really realized that at the, the start of Tuesday night that I was totally out of sync with this committee. All right, I represented some things to other bodies that I thought I could deliver you know, upon discussion with the committee and I was not able to deliver it. Um, but I'm not faulting you guys ever. You know, my job is to speak on your behalf, mm -hmm. all right? But I can't always consult with you because people work, we don't have time for meetings, mm -hmm. et cetera, so I'm supposed to be constantly taking your temperature. And I did a very inefficient job. And in the end, I may have, I may have hurt the process. No. Well, that's, that's not, I've had enough discussions on all this. I was just telling you where I'm coming from. Are we going to make comments too? No. <laughs> that's why we're going to reorganize next week. So well, for that means the agenda. <laughs> we, well, that's the reorganization part. Yeah. But I mean, you know, from, from our standpoint, from my standpoint personally, I think you represent this committee very well. And just just my personal opinion, I've learned a lot from you. And, and I think that you you keep us on track. And I think it's very critical at a very critical time, which now is the budget season, your leadership is needed. And I concur. So, so I don't that's as far as I'll go on, you know, right now. I understand what you're saying, but I also, in the same environment that's existed in the last three town meetings, this next cycle is going to be very, very difficult. Yes. All right, and it's going to be something that this town probably hasn't gone through since Proposition 2 and a half. Yep. And there's issues that are going to come up, and I don't see the compromises that work. I don't see the desire for solutions. And neither will a new chair. Right. It's not going to be any different, no matter who we put up there. Mr. Trudell. Couple comments. The ability to deliver votes can be interpreted a couple of ways. The feeling that if you cannot deliver a vote of the Finance Committee could realistically, logically, and correctly be interpreted as a vote of no confidence which as we know in other governments requires the <coughs> chairman to fall on his sword. <laughs> I'm there. I, I really feel bad that they've changed that in Japan, but that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> 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 uh, to, to see the time that you put into what goes on and your leadership uh, is a given. I think you're at the end of the day board on this area. But feeling that you received a no confidence vote town meeting is very real because we as a committee, and since I wasn't there, it's easy for me to say, have strong feelings on things. But we also have to understand that given this open meeting law, the rules and engagement that he has to deal with, an event occurs Monday, he's got to try and put something together for Tuesday. We stand in the shadow of these things. And when we are then exposed to the sunlight, we can't complain because of the way the state has structured open meeting. But we can, even though we mumble sometimes, and should support our chairman on particular issues because he has to go out and make these compromises. Now, it was an inexperienced individual at this, you could say, perhaps. We've watched him for a couple of years, and we've watched him this year. He has the leadership, he has the background, he has the depth, he has the ability to coordinate. And so the only question that I'll ask you, Mr. Chairman, is this. Should you feel that that no confidence vote is there against you and choose to go forward with your desires. Please take the time to explain to me when you do who is best suited here to step into that gap during these various times because that is the key question that we're 
we put a lot of faith into you. And I don't think it's mistrusted or misplaced. But I need to know that you see a vision that there is someone on this committee that can step in, grab the leadership of the time, demonstrate that leadership, and continue on. I ask that as one of your committee members. I think it's a critical question that needs to be asked. And I ask that at this point, further discussion on this issue be closed. And we'll move on to the important things of the journal. I fully agree. I Unless agree. anyone has any more business. Motion to adjourn. Motion has been made to adjourn. Second. Uh, second to go to the Honorable Mr. Brunk. Does anybody All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. Only because there's still things to be done. Two eyes have it. Thank you for what you just said. I'm going to find the better if someone else would do it.